All right. Hello and welcome to Inverticast. I am Leah from Tarantulia and obviously here at Inverticast. And today Simon is actually at the Great Ant Expedition uh, over there in the UK. I am not there, unfortunately. <laughs> But that's why he's not here, so I'm going to be doing this all by myself, uh, clearly. So, but as I said before, it's all good. Like, we'll, we got this. So today, um, I will be discussing dragonflies. And it's a really cool topic because I found so much folklore about dragonflies, uh, which, is, which is really, really fantastic. So uh, lots of cool old like mythologies and legends that surround this incredible insect. Um, but I also found all kinds of just fantastic scientific information. And I'm here to bring it to you guys so you don't have to do all the dirty work, right? So I did all the research so that you guys don't have to. So dragonflies are uh, classified as Anisoptera. And they are, there are about, roughly about 3,000 species of these aerial predatory insects. They're found next to freshwater um, habitats throughout most of the world. So you can pretty much find them everywhere, which is pretty fantastic, I think. Um, they are also, uh, they're they're classified as Anisoptera, but they're generic. They're, they're, uh, what's the, <laughs> their genera, um, or their order is, uh, Oronata. So they are characterized. So if you've ever seen a dragonfly, you know that they look like these long bodies with probably about four wings, right? Uh -huh. And you would be absolutely precisely correct on that. So they are, they do have long bodies uh, with two narrow pairs of intricately uh, veined membranous wings. They, the wings are mostly transparent, but many of them can be colored um, and have like markings and, and all that cool stuff. But one difference about their wings that when the dragonfly is at rest, their wings will spread horizontally rather than coming together vertically like other uh, flying insects. So that's another unique thing about uh, dragonflies. And there is a species of dragonfly that is migratory, uh, which means that this dragonfly will basically travel from one place to another in a, in a migration pattern that they always do like annually. Um, so the migratory dragonfly makes an annual multi-generational journey of about 18,000 kilometers, which comes out to be about 11,200 miles. That's a long way to go. That's like at least, a, I, dude, that's halfway around the world, honestly. Um, also, dragonflies, you can tell that you're looking at a dragonfly because they have these huge bulging eyes that occupy most of their head they give them these eyes give them about approximately a 360 degree view of the world obviously so they have a 360 degree uh view field of vision um, they are large and colorful insects obviously with a wingspan that can be up to six inches um, and the smallest dragonfly has been uh, close to an inch, so about 0.8 inch, uh, which, you know, eight, eight tenths of an inch, essentially. They are agile flyers, and among the fastest insects in the world, they have been clocked at about, at the fastest at 18 miles per hour, which, I don't know what the kilometers per hour is on that, sorry guys, I'll have to convert it sometime. Um, but anyhow, they are the fastest, some of the fastest flyers in the world. Um, and their wing muscles have to be warm in order for them to function uh, at optimal levels. They eat other small flying insects, and some regularly consume prey that is 60% their own body weight. 
um, which again is just incredible. And not only not only do, do they consume prey that is sixty percent their own body weight, but they also capture that prey in midair. Like as they're flying, they just snatch it out of the air. So we're going to talk about their flight patterns and kind of how they are able to fly the way that they do um, here in a moment. But first, let's talk about when they are young in their larval stage. So usually they uh, you can call them larvae or nymphs. That's It's pretty much the same thing. But essentially, when they are in their uh, larval stage, they, they are um, aquatic, almost like completely aquatic. And they also are predatory, even in their larval stage. So they possess an anatomical structure that adults don't possess while they are in their nymphal stage and it's called a mask but essentially what it is it's a fusion of the third pair of mouth parts um, that include fang-like pinchers that are used to seize prey like worms crustaceans tadpoles and small fish um, and then basically it's a set of pinchers that they will use to to grab you know, small prey items in the water, and then they eat them up, essentially. So, and also they, uh, in their nymphal stage, they actually will um, ingest water and then propel it or shoot it out of their, their rectum, essentially. And that's how they propel themselves along the water uh, while, they, while they are living their aquatic lives. And typically, they live most of their lives uh, aquatically. So they most of most of a dragonfly's life is actually underwater. So it's in in the water in the freshwater. Um, and so when you see them flying around and stuff, you're you're essentially looking at like you know two to three year old dragonfly. Um, so that's another interesting uh, aspect of the dragonfly, as we all know. Alrighty. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, once they are, ha so they crawl, they essentially crawl from their eggs that are uh, typically laid in or near water sometimes, or some species of them will lay their eggs in like plant, soft plant tissues. Um, others attach eggs to substrates or just above the water surface. Others will just drop their eggs just right over a body of water as they are flying, which is pretty, pretty, fascinating. Um, about halfway through their larval stage, their wings will become apparent. So their wings start to emerge. And of course, those wings, um, as that as that nymph uh, grows and molts over time, then those wings are, are going to become more and more apparent and more and more developed, which is really cool. And so, yeah. So the first uh, fossil record of dragonflies was 300 million years ago, which again is really incredible. That that's, I mean, that's all the way back to like the Jurassic period. Um, so they are one of the very first insects to ever inhabit uh, our planet Earth, and they can live up to six and a half years. And again, as I said, they live mostly as nymphs underwater, and that's pretty fascinating. So I also found some really cool facts about dragonflies. So I'll go through those. Um, they can intercept prey in midair. So essentially, they don't chase prey. They snag them from midair um, with a calculated aerial pursuit or an ambush. And yeah. Like, so they have each, uh, each of their wings has its own set of muscles that controls that wing. And so that's, again, another one of those really, really cool, fascinating facts about dragonflies. Um, they have very sharp mandibles. And in, in all actuality, odonata means, like, directly translates to toothed ones. So they catch prey with their feet. So as they're flying, they'll they'll see a prey item like a mosquito or or something like that, and they will calculate how fast the mosquito is going and how you know what kind of speed they need to be able to catch that mosquito, 
Um, and then they will just catch it, snag it, but they catch it with their feet. And then they use those mandibles to basically rip off the wings of this other flying insect and then devour it um, live, essentially. So they, they tear off the wings so that, that uh, their prey insect can't escape. It can't get away from the dragonfly, which, again, is really, <laughs> really kind of cool, but also brutal and terrifying. Um, so many brutal, terrifying things in the uh, invertebrate world, don't you think? <laughs> mm. Excuse me a moment. All right. So as I said before, they are freaky flyers. So they have two sets of wings with muscles that basically control each set of wings. So each each wing that they have, they have four wings. So each wing is controlled by its own set of muscles, okay, which is amazing. So each wing can, can basically operate independently. And this also allows them to be incredibly agile. They can fly forward, backward, side to side. They can even hover. Um, a lot like a uh, Harrier jet, but um, I think a better, a better like comparison as far as flying goes would be a helicopter because those helicopters they can they can fly forward, they can fly backwards, but side to side, um, but, and and they can also kind of hover. But actually, dragonflies can hover a lot better than a helicopter does. So <laughs> it's pretty incredible. And they also, again, as I said, they can reach that top speed of 18 miles per hour. So, again, another it just just amazing fact about dragonflies. Um, they're just they're just incredible creatures, and the fact that they're predatory. I mean, it really makes sense. They they're kind of set up in a way that like other flying insects really don't stand a chance. So, <laughs> all right, let's talk about their eyeballs. So their eyeballs are these huge, enormous, like bulbous deals that pretty much take up their entire head, as we've stated before. But essentially, they contain uh, 30,000 facets within that one eye. So what that means is they can see colors and they can see things that we can't. They have like a 360 degree view of their world, essentially. So. That also means that they can narrow in on in a swarm of other insects. So say there's a swarm of like mosquitoes or a swarm of moths and butterflies and stuff. They can actually narrow down to one, one of those mosquitoes or one of those butterflies and then calculate how fast they need to get at them and how fast, you know, they can kind of predict where those other flying insects are going to be going. Um, essentially and then fly at it and pretty much ambush it and take it down in that manner and use those incredibly agile wings to be able to capture that flying prey. Um, they spend, again, they spend a lot of time underwater as in their nymphal stage. So some species actually can spend six years underwater um, and the last like six or so months of their life will be spent flying as a dragonfly. So when you see a dragonfly flying through the air, you're really looking at something, an insect that is in its last like six months to, to a year of its life. Um, so essentially when it is flying and you know, predating on other flying insects and whatnot, that its sole purpose is, is essentially to, um, uh, uh, procreate and then kill insects and die. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> Carrie's asking, small Apollo wants to know if their eyesight is very sharp with all that amazing lens action. Absolutely. So their eyesight is incredible. They can actually see ultraviolet, um, an ultraviolet spectrum that I don't believe humans can, can uh, perceive, if you will. So they, as I said before, like their eyesight is so good that they can just single out one mosquito within a horde of them or a or a a swarm of them. So one mosquito and a swarm of mosquitoes, they can narrow down onto that one mosquito and basically predict 
where its trajectory is and that's how they end up ambushing that that mosquito and uh taking it down it's pretty incredible pretty incredible indeed and so when we're looking at them uh if you look at the the thumbnail picture of the dragonfly that i used for this episode um is actually a picture that i took myself of a little dragonfly that was in my backyard um and it was so beautiful and i just i love dragonflies i actually really love how their heads are able to move like just almost completely around like that um and i also really love their eyes their eyes are fascinating so as i'm looking at this dragonfly and i might look away and maybe the dragonfly looks away but that dragonfly can still see me whereas i can't <laughs> um let's see oh yes so eden inverts says that dragonflies are living helicopters with built-in radar systems and can't see can't see very well. We have uh, tons of them around the lakes here. Oh yeah, I I mean dragonflies are pretty incredible. I I thought that they have pretty good at vision, and um, their vision is is definitely better than ours. So, uh, Carrie says, wow, so they really use their sight for hunting and defense. It's why they are so hard to catch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they are really, really hard to catch, even when they are sitting still and whatnot, like they are, are incredibly fast. So if you try to like, you know, capture that dragonfly, it's, it's going to see you before you even are there. You know, it's going to calculate that, oh, the human is probably going to try and reach at me, you know, like they can calculate and feel the air changes and whatnot um, before it even happens. So, yeah, just just an incredible, all around incredible creatures. Um, oh, no worries, Eden Inverts. I, I understand about typing errors. I make them all the time. <laughs> if you guys uh, join in my, my Discord server, uh, Inverticast does now have a discord server i will of course link that down below um at the end of at the end of uh this podcast or at the end of the stream um that way you guys can join if you'd like and you can talk to me and stuff but yes i do make lots of typos um <laughs> stupid autocorrect right okay so yeah their eyes are enormous they're compound and they have 30,000 facets which i believe means that how we have one retina, they have essentially 30,000 retinas. So they have 30,000 pupils and retinas that pick up everything. So amazing. They are incredibly beneficial to us um, just overall. Like they, uh, not only are they incidental pollinators because they, you know, they fly around and stuff. And a lot of time they'll land on other plant matter and things like that to rest. Um, and through that, they will pick up a little bit of pollen. And as they fly away, they will probably drop that pollen somewhere and, and pollinate little flowers. So incidental pollinators, um, which we need. But they are also beneficial because they are pest control for like populations of mosquitoes and uh, biting flies and stuff like that. That's, that's what they predate on or so that's what they eat. Um, and that actually means a lot to us because these guys are very prolific when it comes to being a predator. So I found that they can eat like one dragonfly in an entire span of a day can eat up to 30, between 30 and 100 and hundreds, like hundreds. Okay, so 30 to like 400 mosquitoes in one day, um, which again, is just incredible. So if you see those dragonflies hanging around your house or, you know, you're at a park and there's some dragonflies there, leave those, leave those guys alone because they really are helping us out. Mosquitoes and biting flies are a pretty big threat to human beings because they carry diseases like malaria um, and other bloodborne pathogens like, you know, the West Nile virus. I know there's been a lot of noise coming from from that whole thing, because it's kind of a newer disease and we don't really know how to handle it. Um, so there's that, and that actually is transmitted through mosquitoes. So if you see those dragonflies flying around, just let them be. Don't catch them, don't do anything with them. They are helping us to battle those uh, blood, 
bloodborne pathogens and those those diseases that um, you really don't want to contract. Um, all right, let's get into folklore, guys. Yeah. Okay. So, um, generally, dragonflies are believed to carry the souls of the deceased into the afterlife. And so that's kind of a theme um, throughout a lot of the folklore and like cultures that I found the, the theme of, it's kind of a major facet of those mythologies that they're, they have a pretty big uh, impact on the afterlife or like carrying those spirits. Um, so let's get into it. In Japanese mythology, so we're heading over to Japan first, okay? They believe uh, that red dragonflies are believed to be the spirits of um, the dead visiting their loved ones. So they also see uh, dragonflies as a symbol of courage and bravery because of their agile flight patterns and predatory nature. Um, they are also seen as a good fortune and they are believed to bring good luck and prosperity and of course harmony because i mean why they're so pretty so of course I, I feel like there's a very harmonious like air about dragonflies for sure um they also bring a sense of peace and prosperity um uh, often depicted that way in uh traditional japanese art and design so you can often see uh dragonflies just being um just being very kind of harmonious. Thank you, Eden Inverts. I have heard this about the afterlife as well. Very interesting. I agree. Um, and and it's not just one or two cultures. It just it really seems to be kind of across the board that dragonflies are seen to carry spirits. Um, sometimes they're messengers. Um, it's it's really fascinating. So again, and you know. I remember we were talking about uh, cicadas recently and how they are also seen as something purveying the afterlife. So like that immortality and whatnot. So it's really interesting that we see uh, in mythology and folklore that these inverts and these insects are seen, are seen in that way. And so um, I could probably dig deeper into the folklore and kind of find out exactly where that comes from or like what the stories are behind it. Um, I just didn't do that um, just because, you know, I needed to make sure I got all the information that I needed to give kind of that basic all around information on dragonflies. Um, but of course, another episode we can touch and do that deep dive into the into the folklore of these amazing creatures. Right. Um, OK, so in the Native American cultures, they are viewed as messengers between the living and the spirit world. So essentially they're seen as a symbol of both transformation and renewal. And due to the metamorphosis that dragonflies go through from water dwelling nymphs to airborne adults, um, they are also seen as renewal of life and immortality of the soul. So again, another one of those uh, spirit world connection, right? Um, the connection, they also, in Native American folklore, are believed to have a connection to dreams and illusions. So the iridescent wings and their bodies are often viewed as symbols of life's illusions um, and the importance of seeing beyond the illusions of life uh, to, the, to the real truth of the matter, essentially. Um, let's see what else. And they also represent the winding journey of self-discovery. So they are believed to be the souls of deceased. Um, let's see. Dreaming of the life that they once had here on, on in the living world. Okay. Um, and also a symbol of happiness, speed, and purity. Their speed and purity represent new beginnings. So um, all around kind of like the that interesting like spiritual connection between dragonflies um, and and human folklore, obviously. So in Native American cultures, a lot of them are seen to be those messengers or uh, a person who has already passed on. They are dreaming of the life that they once had. So it's very interesting that we, you know, humans kind of see them in that light. Um, 
and then yeah the the new beginnings and that metamorphosis and the self discovery um i definitely i i honestly this one is not super hard to kind of figure out where that comes from just because um life is life is a journey as cheryl crow said life every day is a winding road um and you know if you you traverse your life and stuff you're going to learn a lot of stuff about yourself you're going to be challenged you're going to have to make choices and decisions um some of us are challenged in ways like like with me i'm challenged with mental health so that means that you know when i wake up in the morning i essentially like some days are really worse than others and um some days are really easy you know and for me, when those hard days come, that's that choice that I'm faced with. It's a challenge to say, okay, am I going to let the depression win and just stay in bed all day or, you know, do nothing, right? Or am I going to be brave and do what I can to, like, push that demon away, right? Um, and so it, it definitely is that metamorphosis. So as the dragonfly is you know, changing through its nymphal stage over time. Um, so are we, we are changing over time all the time. So definitely self-discovery is, is pretty apparent on that one. All right, let's move on to uh, the European folklore. So we've got European um, folklore and a lot of it actually comes from, and I'm kind of sad that Simon isn't here to talk about this with me because, you know, he's right there, but a lot of it comes from the Celtic, uh, uh, cultures and and people from from that time which i'm i'm very irish so this this rings true for me it's pretty awesome uh in any case here we go <laughs> so in european folklore dragonflies are actually seen a little differently they're associated with the devil and death but there's that that death and passing and the afterlife so there's there's that kind of theme coming again um, they are particularly associated with the dev devil through the Scandinavian uh, culture and Eastern European. Um, so obviously not Celtic cultures. They are sometimes called devils, devils darning needles, uh, or the devil's horses, which is again really fascinating um, that they are associated with devils. I'm not really sure where that one came from. Um, so that might be that deep dive episode that we get into for, uh, dragonflies and why their mythology is the way it is. Right. Um, okay. So they were also believed in, and this is again, that Eastern European folklore and, and legends that they were believed to sew up the eyes, ears, or mouths of misbehaving children while they were asleep. Um, so that is, well, that's kind of spooky, but I kind of, I kind of get it just because like dragonflies do have that really skinny, like long body shape. So, and of course their mouth parts are, you know, um, <laughs> we'll see. I don't know, but, uh, they also are seen to have a connection to the fairy world. Now we're getting into the Celtic folklore on this one. So. Connection to the fairy world, um, the Celtic regions of Europe, there's a link between the human and the magical realm of fairies, and they are regarded as signs of the fairy of fairy encounters. Um, Irish folklore also tells us of little people who ride on dragonflies as horses um, and to travel quickly like a blink of an eye. And we did talk about the speed of the dragonfly, 18 miles an hour. They are indeed one of the very fast, uh, fastest insects in the world. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they use dragonflies as horses to travel quickly throughout the world. Um, and some stories actually imply that dragon, the dragonfly is the fairy itself in disguise and can only be seen from like a certain angle. So you have to be able to look at that dragonfly at the right angle, and then you'd be able to see the fairy. Um, I have actually seen some very interesting documentaries about people who still believe in fairies today in Ireland and um, probably parts of England and Scotland. But in any case, uh, they do absolutely believe that fairies exist and that they see them. Um, 
and they did talk about dragonflies being fairies that you know are just traveling through our world in disguise um so it's that's kind of fascinating that the celtics uh the celtic uh beliefs kind of put dragonflies with fairies um i know that there is a lot of artwork that depicts dragonflies among on you know alongside of fairies um that kind of thing the fae you know um also in a lot of uh pop culture like television shows and stuff there is definitely a connection between fairies and dragonflies uh one that comes to mind would be fern gully there was this wonderful you know animated uh movie back in i want to say the mid 80s maybe late 80s or so i all i know is i loved this movie as a kid and uh in any case, they actually depicted dragonflies um, for the fairies that were riding on it. And then, so, I mean, that kind of makes sense. There you go. Pop culture definitely follows that folklore. Um, and yeah, so dragonflies are seen as messengers. They're seen as the carriers of uh, the deceased spirits into the afterlife. They're seen as devils um, and uh, fairies. And they're also seen as good omens. Some of them, they're seen, you know, this is this is a, a positive thing. Like, they're given that harmonious kind of uh, view and these kinds of things. So that's, that's really fascinating. Um, but that is all I have for today about dragonflies. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Check, listen, if you have other really cool stories about dragonflies, if there's something that I missed, about these incredible creatures please feel free to join my discord and tell me all about it either that or you can find us on the facebook page and you can tell me about it there um either way i check them daily i am i'm in discord constantly so uh yeah yeah check it out all the time and I, i'm always there so again we are also on like most of the audio streaming platforms. So if you can't watch us live, um, or if you can't, you know, if you just don't like YouTube, whatever it is, you can find us on, uh, I believe, Amazon Music. You can find us on Spotify uh, and a whole plethora of others, uh, including iHeartRadio. Um, and if you're really, really into tarantulas, you can find me at Tarantulia. I have a couple of rehousings that I'm going to be doing, which of course I of course keep those species spotlights. So um, check that out because I'd love to include all kinds of really beneficial, really great information on species, um, you know, specific species, of course. And I've been doing a lot of diamond art. So I I love diamond art or I, I don't know how they call it, what they call it, but diamond art is fascinating to me. It really helps to soothe me and um, I really enjoy making these pieces of art through diamond art. So um, I will, I can and will take commissions. If there's something that you want me to, to make as far as a diamond art, I can do that. Just let me know. Um, and then we'll, we'll discuss all that stuff. Um, yeah, as always, have fun, Simon. I hope the great ant uh, expedition is going well for him. I'm hoping that he sees and gets a whole bunch of cool inverts. I hope Lily gets another Versicolor. I know that she uh, recently lost her hair being a Versicolor, so really sad about that. Um, but yeah, I hope she gets another like two or three because that's just how we do. Um, and of course, thank you guys again so much for, for being here and for, you know, and putting in those comments. Um, go check out the Mantis Garden. I'm sure he's going to post a really cool video about his expedition today. Um, but yeah, and thanks for listening. We will see you guys next week.